No niin. Jatkamme sitten tämän seminaarin päivän toisella osiolla. Me lähdemme tutustumaan näihin terminologiapalveluihin. Tämä esitys tallennetaan. This, recording will be, this seminar will be recorded. And now we are going to see and hear about terminology services. So please go on, Daniel. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I previously I, I described this is the 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 way that SNOMED is structured and the way that SNOMED is distributed. It's it's like what 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 the SNOMED CT terminology consists of and and how that is is sent out to its users. Um, but it's it's like quite a mouthful of, of stuff uh, in there. Uh, and there, there is a, a, a real need uh, to have services which facilitate and allow the use of the terminologies. Um, so no, no one would imagine using these RF2 files directly or, or even like using I'm, I'm sure all of us have sent uh, in in their prof like work with with health informatics and, and coding and so on has sent Excel sheets back and forth in, in different versions and, and so on and and I, I still think that Excel even uh, it has its limitations, but it, it you could think of it as a kind of terminology service, but a very primitive one. And there are much we can do much better uh, than than using Excel. Uh, so terminology services are just any any services which are aimed to allow or facilitate the use of, of terminologies. And what they do is that they try to hide at least some of the complexity of, uh, of particularly modern terminologies. So uh, previously, I, I'm, I'm sure in, in and, and even currently the uh, WHO classifications are uh, uh, can be distributed as uh, as like Excel sheets or ASCII files or or, or uh, something, uh, and that that was fine because the the structure of ICD is quite straightforward. But if you want to use the features of of SNOMED, which uh, distinguishes it from from previous generations of of terminologies, uh, that that adds to the complexity, and and the terminology services can help in in hiding away some of that complexity uh, and facilitate and and particularly lower the threshold of using all the terminologies capabilities. So, um, uh, it's for for many users of of snowmed there there might be uh the use case might be fairly simple they they want a set of codes to be used for a, uh, some particular purpose and even though the, the that use case might be uh like a simple list of of concepts and terms to choose from uh, it's it still benefits from the complexity in SNOMED even because it allows the maintenance uh, through the, the the logic definitions and so on. And using the terminology services can actually uh, make it easier to uh, even even easier than than using Excel because with Excel you need to deal with versioning and and uh, uh, and so on, which is is adds complexity. Whereas the terminology services typically has some kind of support uh, for such things. 
if you use a standardized terminology service interface, uh, you could standardize access to the terminologies when using different terminologies. So we're, we're still using both, like we're using both SNOMED and, and ICD. And if you have a standardized interface for your terminology services, you could you could use the same service for both terminologies and, and that would facilitate use and, and implementation and, and development of, of uh, systems around those, those terminologies. Uh, one particular thing when it comes to SNOMED that I would like to mention is ex the expression constraint language, which allows you to query for SNOMED CT concepts. So it's, it's, it's a way of, of querying for, for concepts, really, uh, which is very helpful in, in, in many cases. And I will show some examples later on. I will show uh, two examples and, and try to provide some, some links. Uh, so first, you could be using SNOMED with uh, SQL databases. Um, if you have uh, data in in uh, uh, in 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 some database format already, like your patient data or research data or whatever, it could be uh, uh, a benefit to use SNOMED in the same uh, same environment. And I will also show some use of using SNOMED with Snowstorm which is a terminology server developed by Snowman International for, for a lot of use cases. So I was... Uh, so uh, I, I, I should also mention the FIRE terminology services. That is one recent standard for terminology services. Uh, I, I have a link down here, uh, and these are the, the the colored boxes here are uh, the resources used in for the fire terminology services. Fire terminology service is is a terminology agnostic uh, set of terminology services. So for uh, using uh, in like if if you thinking of using it for an EHR system or, or any patient uh, data management system, it would make sense to use a standard uh, terminology services. And, and right now there are not that many competitors to the, to the FIRE terminology services. So that's definitely worth looking up. Um, and I can show some examples of how that works uh, later today. Expression constraint language is, is a query language for, for SNOMED CT concepts. And I see here that I didn't add the link to the specification on the slide. I, I, will, I will add that link. Um, I will write that down and, and add that uh, so that you could learn more yourselves. But it it's it's basically a, a way of of searching uh, by using SNOMED concepts. So it it uh, it has a certain syntax. There are operators and there are concepts in in different uh, positions in this syntax. Uh, so this example here. You have an operator with, with two less than signs, and then follows a concept. Uh, and and this concept is based on a concept ID, and then there is an optional vertical bar thing. And this is actually part of the syntax. So here it's it's not just for readability. It it's it's for uh, it it's included in the syntax. So you can write readable uh, expression constraint language queries. So this is saying this operator is saying get all the this concepts and all of the descendants of that concept. So 
this piece, which starts with uh, the two lesson signs and ends before the colon, that's saying, give me all clinical findings in SNOMED CT. Uh, and this is the focus concept of the query. And then you afterwards, after the colon, you could add refinements. So I want all the, uh, the clinical findings uh, that have a finding site of joint structure. And you could take this query and, and put it into a, a expression constraint language uh, aware system, and it will calculate all the uh those clinical findings with a finding site of joint structure or any there's another uh descendants operator here so it would be joint structure and any of the descendants so all the specific joints uh i will see if i can shift screens here uh, because I would like to show how this is done uh, practically. So I will stop sharing and then I'll start sharing again. Uh, and now I see only. Ah, there. Uh, let's see, where is. Uh, So I, I already paste. Do you see my screen? This is a browser. Did you see the? Yes. Yeah. So when I click execute here, it finds 4,530 concepts. Uh, and now I'm in the international edition. And uh, this is uh, the exact same thing I put in the uh, on the slide. Uh, uh so i can uh, i i get this these are all this is a long list i i don't think it's sh only showing the first hundred and you could click to get hundred more and and then click again to get the a hundred again so this is built into the the browser and since I think this feature was added yesterday or the, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday. This, so this is fairly recent and this has not been <laughs> translated yet. They, 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 uh, but I, if I, uh, I could filter on, on the term here. So I'm, I'm uh, seeing, uh, so this gives all the clinical findings with the finding side of any joint structure that has a description where the word knee is used. So it finds the concept of uh, osteoarthritis of knee, but it also find uh, prepatellar bursitis, which uh, there is there is some other description where the word knee is used. So knee pain and and so on. So this is this is just one way of where how terminology services could be used to facilitate uh, the use of the terminologies. And and this is of course uh, uh, would be difficult to do by hand or by, <clears throat> but this is prepared for by the the terminology service. So I will. I'll, so I'll, I'll switch back to the to the presentation again, and if there are any questions, then just you could try this at home if you go to the browser. Uh, so that's uh, <clears throat> our expressions, SNOMED concepts. 
in their own rights? No. Uh, is and as such could also be released as files? No. There is uh, are there any ready-made expression libraries or are they saved as text for each user? So uh, <clears throat> the, the the question, so th they are not concepts in their own rights. Uh, they're they're not they're they are um, they, they, because they represent not a single concept but a set of concepts. Uh, so there there could be a, a concept which uh, is, for example, in this case, uh, joint finding or something which corresponds has the descendants which are the exact same set as the uh, as the uh, descendants the the result of this expression so th that that could happen but this is it, it's important to distinguish the the this is not a single concept it's a set of concepts so the what is returned uh, is uh, is is a set and not a single concept. Yeah. So and and these are uh, these terminology services are usually behind the interface. So you could, for example, have a, a such a query which pre-populates a, a menu or something. Uh, so this this as uh Juha says is is typically happening behind the scenes uh, but for for those working with terminology it, it's a uh, it's a very useful tool to uh to allow querying for for snowman content and and this is you so the the browser is one example there are uh, so you are sent the link to the chat with a snowman ui example uh, uh, where there there is a, a mock-up electronic health record system which uses snowman and there are even explanations of what's happening behind the scenes uh, so to say in in this so this is uh, uh, a good place to to see what what can be done with with terminology services. Uh, and what you do with the result afterwards, it's let's see, am I? Uh, I'll try to find there. Now I I'm I'm sharing again. Uh, what 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 happens with the result that that depends on what you aim to do with a, if that is used for querying patient data then you would take the results and join it with your with your patient data if uh, it's for user interface you would you would like fill a menu or 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 something so it would depend on on uh, uh on where you are with um uh with your application what you want to do so in the browser there is no way of saving uh the output of an expression i and i assume this is because you 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 would it would take a lot of resources if people would send complex uh, uh, expression constraint queries to the to the service, and that would mean that they would have to buy more expensive server time and service space. So that's, I, I think that, that trying to limit. And if you you could, as as I will show later, you could uh, use this uh, uh, in in your own terminology uh, server, you could fairly easily 
could in, install your own terminology server and, and use those queries in your own system or for your own purposes. It's maybe, uh, you likely should have uh, at least some technical knowledge to do that, of course, but but it's 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 doable. So uh, using let's see where we are. Uh, I think we're fine with time. Uh, so I, it was was that a, a reasonable response to your question? Are there any more questions to Daniel? Yes, Kari. Um, in chat. Yeah, uh, uh, terminology service. Any experience of using one in real life, large scale installations? Any experience integrated one with a large patient data system? Um, I, I, uh, so I, I, I have some previous experience with. Uh, I, I've been a, a hospital EHR system uh, uh, administrator once. Uh, uh, that was a, a few years ago now, but uh, that the EHR system had its own terminology services uh, implemented, and, th and those were not based on on uh, on any of these. Uh, simply because that was more than 10 years ago. Uh, I think it's still kind of the case that uh, EHR systems, they they build their, their own terminology services, which might support some of these features, uh, uh, and, and but maybe not all of them. So that you would have to look at the EHR. Uh, I know that uh, I, I Talk to uh, one Swedish vendor. There is a Swedish uh, uh, vendor called Cambio, and they said that they had installed uh, Snowman CT terminology service in their uh, uh, EHR system. Uh, so that is one. I uh, so Epic, Cerner uh, have at least some. I think Epic is is from what I've heard. I I haven't. I have no first-hand experience, but I've, I've heard what people are saying uh, that Epic has those those kind of services built into the system. I, I, as I said, I don't have any first-hand experience, but but from what I've seen, uh, other people doing with with Epic, uh, and because it was Epic that you you bought in Finland, wasn't it? It was Epic, not Millennium. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Anyhow, uh, so uh, so those would be examples of uh, like real life large scale installations of terminology services. Uh, uh, I I don't know what counts. So the the there there is a server running the the browser, uh, and 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 that's of course a very different use case from an EHR. Uh, but there's a, a fair, fairly large amount of use of, of the of the browser. So there, there seems to be, and there, there is a. It's it's being technically maintained by Snowman International using the I think Amazon Web Services or something like that. So it's it's it can handle a. a, a, a a load from the entire Snowman community, so it 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 it, it there are even though it's not a an EHR system, it's uh, so I think that's the 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 best answer I can give. Uh, what what you you can do is talk to other users of of uh, systems like Epic. Uh, which are in 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 already in use and which use Snowmed, which means that it's it would be in the like the Netherlands, uh, the US, and and so on. Uh, 
and to hear what their experiences are. Uh, so I'm I'm neither a vendor nor a, a, a EHR system user, uh, or and, and I, I used to be an administrator, but that was a long time ago. So I, I would recommend talking to those people who are actually using SNOMED inside the system, and, and like Epic would be a a good starting point at least. Is that a reasonable reply to the to that question? And I think uh, the next week will be a Snowmet City Expo on Thursday and Friday, mm. and it's a good chance to uh, also join from Finland. It's free of charge, and uh, you can discuss hopefully for a lot of. Uh, other people around the world with uh, using Sonoma City in their daily work. Yeah, so so yeah, of course that that would be, that would be an excellent opportunity. Uh, it's it's online, so it's the the meeting people by like by chance will be more difficult. Uh, but there there are likely presentations about this. So if you if you go to the Snowmed Expo website, you can find and see if there are any uh, presentations which which might talk about this particular topic. Uh, I, I, I otherwise there there are people uh, as I understand the CT Expo requires registration to use the event platform. Yes, I think you need to register, but the, there is no fee for registration. So that's true. Yeah. I think there are more than 1,200 1, participants in the Snowmet Expo at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big, big conference. It is. So, uh, let's let's continue. If there are no more questions, I will uh, see. So, uh, uh, we could get into the uh, the use of SNOMED with uh, SQL databases. Uh, so, if if you're looking to use uh, SNOMED with some data, which is already in the in a, um, a SQL database, uh, that that could make sense to uh, load also SNOMED into the uh, to to a SQL database, and there are a number of different. Uh, let's see what happens if I click this one. Will it open the link? But it will not share. So I okay. So you could you could have a look to yourself. Uh, there are scripts for uh, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL. There are actually two two scripts for MySQL, uh, uh, Postgres, uh, and uh, Neo4j databases. So there is there's a lot of of uh, options there uh, for for loading your. Uh, well, not all of them were. So Neo4j is not a uh, SQL database, but there are there are still uh, opportunities there, different opportunities, uh, and you could check them if, if you if you want to. Uh, one important aspect and and uh, uh, something that facilitates use of SNOMED within a uh, SQL database is. Uh, let's see, is something called the transitive closure uh, table, and and the transitive closure table is 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 actually the tr transitive closure of the ISA relationships, and that is the table uh, which contains all descendants for each concept, so not only the children or the, uh, but all all of them, all down to the bottom of of the SNOMED hierarchy. Uh, so this significantly speeds up querying uh, 
uh, using uh, the the SNOMED hierarchy. Uh, so what I will try to do now is that I will show a, a practical example. Um, uh, and I so you could uh, you could load uh, using the the link provided. You could load uh, SNOMED into just the the database of your choice, and uh, uh, you would get a fairly similar. Uh, so what what these uh, database loading scripts do generally is that they take the contents of the release format two files, the, the files I was talking about before, and load them into database tables. Uh, so I so the loading can take some time uh, because of the size of SNOMED. So I, I will not show that actual step today because that, that would be us spending hours looking at uh, uh at the empty screen more or less uh so i will just show some examples of what, what it looks like when you have the uh data loaded into uh to a sql database and what happens when uh when you how, how you can use it to query uh data using uh, SNOMED in the database. So let's see. I, I will stop sharing the presentation and start sharing. Uh, let's try to find. Uh, I will. Uh, let me know when you can see the screen now. So what you're seeing here is uh, MySQL Workbench, which is uh, a tool for uh, for using uh, for using uh, 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 connecting to a MySQL database. So so this is um, uh, uh, one one of the options available. I will though say that what I will be using is not one of those uh, database loading scripts that I I was showing previously because I created my own uh, several years ago and and I'm uh, uh, you you can't learn old dogs to sit I don't know if you have that saying in 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 uh, in in Finland, but it's 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 I I I find it difficult to shift uh, once I get used, uh, but it works kind of the same. Uh, so particularly if we want to uh, query for uh, all the concepts that are uh, in in like types of asthma. I, I've used that as an example. Uh, so I type this is SQL. This is technical, but I, I'll just to those of you who know this will will be able to see when when I make an error, and those of you who don't at least will see that it actually works. I have this transitive closure table. Uh, and I can select the super type to be, and here I need to copy from my prepared. Oh, uh, that was, I'll uh, see, where did I? Uh, I lost <laughs> the presentation. I'll see if I can uh, get 
the asthma concept from asthma in the browser please help me uh so uh there so i copied the concept id from the uh from the uh from the browser and inserted into this is basically saying uh give me all everything in this transitive closure table where the super type is uh the, and this is the number of the asthma uh concept so i'll run this query and it's uh, fairly fast there were 109 rows and i'm running the uh july version of snowmed uh, so you could see what we have here at least in my version of the sql uh database so this is if if i i, I have this published on on uh, and i could give you a link to my install scripts but they're they are, i try to change them from time to time so but if if you want to, I could send the link to these as well. Uh, so the super type is is asthma, and these are all the hundred and nine descendants. Uh, and if you look into the international edition, you see that there are only twenty five direct children. So those would be the one with a path length of one. That means that this is the ones which are the direct children. The one with we sort by path length. Uh, uh, we see that this includes the concept itself. It has a path length of zero, and these are the direct children with the one, and these are the grandchildren. And then we get to the grand grandchildren and the grand grand grandchildren, and uh, they were that's the end of the hierarchy. So this you could use to uh to query your database so i i prepared an example of this uh i have a data set I'll, I'll run the query so i have a data set which i received from uh our, our friends in in university of nebraska where they've been using SNOMED since 1992. So they have a fairly extensive database of SNOMED coded. Uh, this particular database is about uh, clinical findings and diagnosis. Uh, so I joined the transitive closure with this database which contains patient data uh where i link the subtype column of the transitive closure table to the snowmed ct id of the patient data and again i have the i start with asthma and then i order by patient id and start time so i could see that there are 26 uh, so there are 3 million rows in this data set and it's been de-identified and all like outliers this this i received this during the ebola uh, uh outbreak uh and and university of nebraska is their national uh like infectious diseases center so they had a lot of the ebola patients being treated and those have been removed from this data sets because otherwise you could identify uh, people. So th this is a de identified, uh, which I have been allowed to use. I'm not allowed to share it, unfortunately. Uh, but it's showed that there are uh, patients with uh, asthma, one with acute exacerbation, uh, exercise induced asthma, and so on. So these are, are it's patient data from their EHR systems, which can be queried. If you put it into a database and I have SNOMED loaded, I have this transitive closure table, I can query for give me all the patients with asthma. And it takes a quarter of a second on, on this like 
fairly standard uh, hardware. Uh, and and again, it's it's three million uh, three million rows uh, in this uh, data set. And and the, as you see, there is also it's it's not just querying on the actual concept of asthma, but also on all the descendants, uh, of which there are I, not that many of mild intermittent. So uh, you you see that you get you get the point. Uh, uh, so these these doctors have assigned these nomad codes to patients, and and now we can query this this data and and. If we've been um, uh, at the at the University of Nebraska, this could be done in real time. And actually, I've seen uh, I, I visited the University of Nebraska to do some joint work, and uh, it's uh, they they actually can do this in real time as well, uh, or at least close to real time. It's it's. It's in in their data repository. They I think they they run every night or something. So you could query on that uh, freely using any any set of SNOMED expressions that you want and and uh, and uh, get your results back on on almost live data, which is uh, kind of of. of what is the point of of using SNOMED in an EHR system? So uh, this is this was uh, I, I so there there if you look here there um, I have uh, there are sets of tables for concepts descriptions rep reference sets of various kinds uh, and relationships and, and descriptions. And there are, I have in the same database, both the full uh, view of, of the, with all the history and the snapshot, which is the, only the most recent, which is sometimes you want to query the history and sometimes you, you don't. So, uh, uh, but, this this is uh, what what uh, we've been using in in the Swedish NRC for uh, we do some quality assurance we could do some uh, batch updating we, or at least we could query our translation uh, to find uh, if there are uh, things that is translated one way which should be translated another way or if the translation is inconsistent we could make those changes by querying this database and and uh, find uh, generate uh, files with content which previously we had to send to uh, snowman international but uh, with with since we're uh, using the tools for snowman international now we could upload those files ourselves what so however uh since we've been starting using snowstorm which is the other terminology server instead of of uh, a sql database for for this work it's we we use it less often today than than we uh we are are uh, we used to be using this, so now we're uh, we're using uh, the snowstorm terminology server for some of the work that that we used to do on the SQL database. So I will see if there are any questions. I I this was also a bit of a technical, but for the for those. Technical people, it's it's uh, it. I I think it was helpful for to see it done in practice, and for the non-technical people, it shows you that if you have SNOMED coded data and SNOMED in into your uh, into your system, there are uh, there are things that you could do and and fairly easily be able to 
uh, query your patient data using SNOMED. So any any questions? So is X? So I'm C. Is there any other? Uh, so from one, one question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, is the expression constraint language directly supported in Snowstorm or SQL? Uh, it's not supported in SQL. You would have to. So what? What what I used to do is that that would translate the the SQL uh, in the expression constraint language. Sorry, I would translate the expression constraint language into SQL uh, by hand. Uh, I there might be. I actually I don't know if there is a, a ECL to SNOMED translator. Uh, maybe there is, and and uh, it could make sense for SNOMED International to provide that for the at least the database, uh, or at least some of the database uh, uh, loading scripts they have, which work because you would, depending on what your your uh, database looks like it if the translation would be different snowstorm uh, supports uh, expression constraint language uh, natively so that that is can be done directly uh, in in snowstorm so the the answer is for snowstorm yes for SQL not that I know of, uh, but it, and maybe there should be, or I I I don't know. Uh, all, all this being said, there and 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 that we moved most of the work to Snowstorm instead of, of SQL is is that we've been. Uh, there are some features, particularly around languages, which are still not well supported by Snowstorm. So I think, uh, let me see. So fin Finnish is a compound language, meaning that you put words together to form even longer words, uh, just like uh, we do in Sweden and Germany. And I, from when I studied linguistics uh, many, many, many years ago, I, I I think Finnish was given the example as to the most extremely compounded language on Earth. <laughs> so you have have very long words. I, I yeah. So you you win that. You take that price. Uh, but it so SNOMED uh, filtering on text filtering and term filtering is based on the start of the word and not any any place inside which limits so it limits the way uh, how effective the search can be and there are things like decompounding breaking words up into pieces to allow querying and so on but that that is currently not supported by snowstorm but that is if you have uh uh any university working with language technologies and natural language processing that that might be an idea for a, for a uh master thesis or something to add uh <laughs> uh yeah uh, so and and it, it it it's 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 a limitation. There there you could work around that, but it, but it's it's kind of a it's it's a bit of a limitation. But but uh, so th then sometimes we still have to use uh, the these um, the the SQL database still. Any other? question or if you want to see another example if you if you don't trust me we could take another example but asthma so i thought you could pick any concept uh, if not then i could go back to 
uh, uh, oh, I see Snowstorm is more based on text matching than instead of... Actually, it's both. It, it has both uh, uh, text matching and uh, uh, the structured uh, database uh, allowing, for example, expression constraint language, but also finding descendants and, and relationships and so on. I will I will actually talk about uh, uh, this right now. So I will stop sharing and start sharing the presentation again. And then I need to find the presentation again. Uh, and it somehow started from the beginning again. So I'll quickly. Um, There. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Uh, there. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it now. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so this is uh, that was a, a quick view of using SNOMED with SQL ser servers uh, of various kinds, or at least one kind. So this is going to be about using SNOMED with Snowstorm. So uh, Snowstorm is a free and open source SNOMED CT only terminology server. It's available from uh, uh, IHTSDO or SNOMED International's GitHub page so you could uh, go there you could download it you could build it you could it's it's from from a, a from a, a perspective of of uh, someone who's uh, is educated to to work with technology it's it's it I, I would rank it as fairly easy to use among uh, other systems so there are uh, ways of installing Snowstorm where you could just type a, uh, uh, a single command and, and you'll be up and running in, in uh, a few minutes. Um, and then, of course, you need to load Snowman and so on. Uh, uh, so, uh, so as I said, Snowstorm is free and open source. It, it means that you could if you if you have the right competence, you could add to uh, the uh, and ma make changes and 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 suggest uh, uh, changes to the uh, to the system. Uh, it's a fairly mature product. It's the the server which is behind the Snowman City browser. So it's it's can manage of uh, the load of, of all SNOMED users around the world. Uh, it's also the server behind both SNOMED International and managed services authoring tools. So when SNOMED International authors are doing their stuff, uh, uh, oops, <laughs> uh, I need to just say, uh, uh, so, uh, sorry for that. Uh, uh, yeah, so it, it, it's used for authoring. So when, when SNOMED concepts are authored, they're using Snowstorm. Uh, and it's uh, and when Snowman releases are created, it's also using Snowstorm. So it's 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 at a point where it's reliable enough to to keep the uh, uh, the Snowman International authoring cycles running. Uh, it's also used since I, I mentioned before that you there are different kinds sets of tools available for using Snowman and. In the Swedish NRC, we have decided to use the uh, called managed services authoring tools. 
it's it's basically a set of tools provided by Snowman International, and we pay us a fee, uh, which I don't remember right now, but it's it's a fairly small fee. It's it's not a big deal uh, for for using uh, the the authoring tools, and it's the same tools that Snowman International uses themselves, and it's all based on on Snowstorm. Uh, so it's it's um, uh, it's 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 a good and mature project. It's not the only one available. Uh, so there is an Australian uh, called uh, Onto Server, which has uh, uh, similar capabilities, but it's it's also not Snowman City only. Uh, there is uh, from uh, a software called Snow Owl uh, from uh, Hungary, uh, Hungarian company, which has provided. That was a server that Snowman International used before using Snowstorm. Uh, there is an Argentinian company making something called TermSpace, which I know the the people in the Netherlands use. Uh, and and I I I think. But all, all, everyone is very happy with their <laughs> with their vendor. So, uh, but since this is the only one which is available free uh, for use, this is uh, uh, at least this is a way to get started if you want to do to use certain terminology services like running expression constraint language queries. That then this is a, at least a, the cheapest way of of most economic way of uh, getting that into uh, into your uh, uh, to a, a, a system, whatever that might be. So uh, let's see if I could. So uh, I I will. Show I will talk a little about bit about snowstorm installation, uh, loading of SnowMed, and then uh, using uh, snowstorm. And there are two interfaces to snowstorm. One is using uh, proprietary SnowMed International uh, interface, which uh, it's it's a set of of uh, 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 operations that that is used by Snowman International themselves for for the browser and for the authoring environment. But Snowstorm also has uh, this Firebase API uh, for querying uh, using, using that API. Uh, so let's go ahead and show some examples. I think if I could do this and then we could take an, another five minute break and then we could do some analytics and then questions. Is that OK? Yes. Yep. 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 OK, so I'll stop sharing that one and I'll start sharing the uh, the other. Uh, Let me find the right window to somehow. So this is uh, uh, this is the page for uh, the the GitHub page for Snowstorm. So it's it's linked in the in the uh, slide deck. So uh, and. There is uh, some description of this piece of software. Uh, uh, there is documentation. And uh, so you could uh, have a look at this and, and see if, if this is uh, uh, this is something that you could install yourself or if you would 
get your uh, IT department or something else to install it for you, this is something that you could uh, you could use. Um, So if you click at getting started, you need some software on your system uh, before uh, it's uh, uh, a Java application. So you need Java on your system and you need uh, some other piece of software and you need uh, a, a release of, of at least the Snowman International Edition and of course any extension you need uh, about eight, eight gigabytes of memory of, of your system i i i think four is fine as well uh you could i i run it on on my laptop uh without any problem um uh, so uh it's uh you you need to install the Snowstorm is, is an application that is built upon a database system called Elasticsearch. Uh, so first you need to install Elasticsearch and there are instructions for doing that. And then you need to download, um, download uh, Snowstorm and then start it. Uh, there are, if you're, uh, using uh, something like Docker, or if you know what Docker is, there it's it's even easier to install uh, uh, with just one one command. You could install uh, the entire environment with the uh, database and and the uh, application Snowstorm application on top of that. Uh, when it comes to to loading. It's uh, when when S Snowstorm is started up, there is a web, uh, a simple uh, web interface. Uh, so if you go to uh, the, the the address where you have Snowstorm installed, you will get a, a user interface that looks like this. So there are different services in Snowstorm for uh, code system, for concept, descriptions, relationships, reference sets, uh, etc. So uh, there, this this is uh, available uh, for for use uh, running when you when you run the Snowstorm snowstorm service if you are going to uh load uh snowmed into your snowstorm when you first start snowstorm it's empty so you need to go to import and create an import job and if it's your first uh, uh, Snowmed. Uh, if if it's if it's empty, then the the top the international one is called main. It, this is documented here. So branch main. This creates versions for uh, what what's ever. So different versions. You know the, the January and July every year and so on. And then you could say if it's a snapshot or if it's a full or if it's a delta. And if you if you have nothing installed already, if it's empty, then you you had need to be either a full or a snapshot. So if we say, for example, that it's a snapshot, and then you type try try it out, and then it creates a response and then you just copy this strange thing from the result of that and you paste that into this 
uh, import RF2 archive method, and then you, you paste it in there. That's the idea of the import, and then you choose your international release uh, file. And I have that available there. So, and then when I I this this I've already prepared, so I won't click this button. But this is what you would do uh, when installing Snowmed into Snowstorm. So it's a matter of first you create an import job using this piece, which is on the documentation page, and then you load the uh, the the release files which you get from your release center. And then you press try it out and it will take, if it's a full import, it will take hours. If it's a snapshot, maybe 20, 30 minutes, depending on what, what uh, the, how, how quick your, uh, your server is. Uh, if you're doing this with, uh, 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 with an extension, if you, for example, want to to load uh, uh, the Swedish extension, there are documentation about how to load uh, extensions. Let's see. Uh, let me find the right loading snowmed. Where is updating there? So this is loading another extension. Okay. Uh, so the, here is <laughs> additions version extensions. That's but, so loading an extension. You. Uh, first need to create uh, a, a new code system because the SNOMED is, is international, is, is a code system and the Swedish edition is another. So here is an example. You do create that, you do, an, uh, so this is a Spanish, this is called SNOMED CTES for Spania and, and you, uh, uh, and this depends on the, in, in this case, the uh, July 19 release of the International Snowman and so on. So that you need to add. Uh, and then you import your uh, Spanish or Swedish or Finnish edition, just like, uh, like you did with the International Edition, but you would type Oh, there, I'll make it a bit larger. So it says Snowbed CTSE. So I'm importing the Swedish extension to the Swedish uh, uh, path, which I have already added before. And then I get a new import ID, and then I take the Swedish extension release file and, and load it. So uh, again, so Swedish is a much smaller extension than the, the international edition, so it will take less time, uh, but it, 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 it will still take some time. This is something that I have, this is a version of SNOMED that we are using at the NRC currently. So if we look into what is inside this, this system, we could get all the editions of SNOMED. In addition, in Snowstorm is called a code system to confuse uh, people. And we could see that this, where we said branch path main, this is the international edition. It's called, the short name is SNOMED CT, and it was imported on the uh, 22nd of September this year. Uh, I was a bit late in in upgrading the extension to the, the upgrading Snowstorm to the latest release because we we are in Sweden with the May release we're still on on uh, the 
on the January release uh, until we have the next release. Uh, it has English language. This is the modules. It, it contains a, a Snowman model component and it contains the ICD mapping module and it contains the core module. So it actually, I was, I was wrong there. I, I didn't count the ICD 10 mapping module. Anyhow, uh, so it was three modules, not two. Uh, this is the second edition that is, it's Snowmed CTSE. It has the path uh, uh, main Snowmed CT-SE. Uh, it's, it depends on the, this is the, uh, the March release that was extra release that was done for COVID. Uh, so this is a, uh, um the way it works the uh the version current version is uh may 31st that's the latest version uh that we we have and this is the path to that uh particular latest version there are swedish and english in the in this uh this uh, edition and it has the the modules it has the uh snowman city model component module it has the swedish nrc maintained module and it has the icd 10 map right, that we got by uh depending on the international and it has the snowman city core module which is uh, all the clinical content of and that's all there is in this uh in this uh, version, this this uh, like da snow snowstorm database, snowstorm thing, whatever it's called. So then this can be used to query for uh, for content. So let's say that we want to query for. So asthma was such a, a great example. Uh, and let's say that we want to query the snow, the Swedish uh, edition. And uh, we want only to query for active concepts. And we want to query for uh, which is this is as in Swedish and only active terms and uh, there are uh, a lot of different features here you see ECL and, and so on but I will try that later I want this is I want Swedish not English and then I'll try it out and it gives back results here. So these are the concepts. This is asthma disorder. We don't have fully specified names in Swedish. So we get the English fully specified name. So I asked for, for Swedish and I get the Swedish preferred term, but the fully specified name, that's the English one because we don't have that in, in the Swedish. Uh, and then this is the first concept. The second concept is uh, acute asthma, severe asthma, asthma clinic, asthma trigger, uh, non-allergic asthma. So this is getting all the concepts which have the term asthma in them. Let's say that we want to query for asthma using ECL instead of using the term. So we could remove this one. We could, and then we put in ECL. I copied the, I just typed something to make it easier to read. So this was a concept. ID for asthma. And this two less than signs means all the descendants. 
and I'll try it out. And I get oral steroid dependent asthma. I don't know how this is sorted. Um, asthma in mother complicating childbirth, asthmatic chronic. Uh, so you, you see the, and we get the Swedish language term there. And uh, if we wanted English, we could type another language in there. Uh, and if we look down, there are 109 uh, responses, but there is a limit to 50. So uh, I could, if I want to search for more, I could say that I want to limit to 200 or something, but there is an upper limit on 10,000 at the time. Uh, and then you could use, like, if you want 10,000 concepts, you could search for the first 10,000, and then you could set the offset to 10,000 and get the next 10,000 and so on. So that you you would you have to do, can't query for larger than 10,000, currently at least. So any any questions? The the obvious question is what do you do with <laughs> with this then? Uh, and any other questions right now? There's Kari, Kari's comment in chat. Yeah, sorry, um, I have that with it. So, so something comes with an API, REST and J for integrating with other system. It might be useful to measure from. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's 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 a good point. Thank you. Um, and actually, it it has two APIs. So the the one we've been seeing, and then there is a fire uh, based API as well. So yeah, that this is a this is a major difference. Uh, that's that's correct. I should have mentioned. Next time I will. Uh, when whenever that happens. Uh, so uh, I will just briefly be showing you if we go to the documentation and using the fire api there are some examples of what can be done uh so if you have a fire if, if, if you so fire has an, a number of terminology services and one is for value sets so if you value sets are typically things that are used in to uh, constrain message specifications or user interfaces uh, so there is a way of using uh, fire interface to to um, run ECL queries and I just copy this from so you see what it looks like. It's the same server address, but it it's the the address is fire value set and expand. So this is a syntax of of fire. And if I run this, um, let's see, it should yeah. Uh, so you get uh, two thousand three hundred fifty nine. Um, and this seems to have returned all of them in one go. Uh, I didn't put the limit on. Yeah, that that was why that that took some time. So here you see you get a different uh, set of. Uh, so you only get the code here, but you. I, I'm. I'm. I have to check. I, I don't know all. 
Snowman codes for my head. So this was chronic disease. Uh, so, but what you can do is that you could uh, query against the specific system version, and I will take the Swedish edition and use, uh, I'll just copy this. Uh, so I realize this is fairly small, but what what it does is that it, it gives you a lot of more information because I there are other parameters to the fire calls. You you in order to understand them, you need to read the fire specification. So, and I said that I want both Swedish designations and English designations for the same uh, all chronic diseases uh, query. So you could see you have the code and a display which is in Swedish uh, because it's that's the default on the uh, Swedish uh, module. This is a Swedish uh, module identifier that that ends with 106 there. Uh, and there is uh, all designations. There is there are three English and one Swedish uh, description for this one. And then it goes on uh, like like this. And this has a limit, I guess, because otherwise it would be full. Let's see what it says. Uh, did I put? A Um, uh, so it, it, it only takes 10 concepts. Uh, it says count 10 there. So that means it only takes 10 concepts. So, uh, so this is uh, two ways of using uh, Snowstorm to integrate with uh, with uh, with systems, and just to show you of an example, and let's uh, see if this is this is a tool that we built based on Snowstorm for creating translation batches that we use for for maintaining. Uh, maintaining uh, uh, SNOMED, and let's hope that there is a good example here. So this is, uh, I we want to replace uh, uh, one Swedish word with another, and then we can query for uh, here is an ECL expression and a term filter, and we could filter it further uh, using uh, regular expressions to work around the problem with with uh, the compound words. We need to look into to the terms, not just only the beginning of terms. Uh, so if I run this. There are no, ah, we made the change already. Uh, so if I go back to the Swedish May release and run the same query again, there were eight of these that we provided a new description from. So um, this is, this is, uh, a, a, a might look complex, but it's it's a, it's a, a few days work uh, for a developer using the because everything almost everything in here is already supported by Snowstorm. Uh, so sh changing the 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 different releases of of Snowmed, and we could even run this on Snowmed International because both are. 
Uh, both editions are available on, on, on our snowstorm. Uh, we can run ECL expressions as built into, uh, into snowstorm. We can do term filtering. And then we just have to do the additional criteria and the replacing of, of words in terms. And then this, this could generate batch files, which we could upload to the authoring environment and get all those changes done. So this is something that, that so we're using to maintain our release and, and, and it's, like if we had to do it ourselves, it it would it would have been a, a manual process and and fairly complex and error prone. But now that we have using Snowstorm, it it's a lot easier. So any questions about Snowstorm? This was a very quick. <laughs> Quick walkthrough of, of of a very complex piece of software, but and and <clears throat> I I hope this at least gives you the impression that this is actually something that can be used. It can be used by uh, systems. It can be used by terminology maintainers. So any any questions? Uh, uh, there Thank is. Daniel. is <clears throat> it looks very interesting to see these tools, how it works. Yeah. Uh, there's one comment from uh, Juha uh, in uh, in chat for clarification. The Fire app uses JSON REST technology for healthcare specific standard content and operations. Yeah. Thank you, Juha. Yeah. So uh, both both uh, the the Snowman International API and and the Fire API uses uh, JSON and REST. I think Fire API could use XML. Maybe I I'm I'm not sure. I haven't tried. I I I don't know why I would either. So, but it's it's based on these kind of modern modern a couple of years ago at least uh now it's it's commonplace uh technologies uh that are used on the web and and elsewhere and and the last but not least part is about analytics yeah so would you like to have a small break daniel now or can we continue because i it, it's a little bit short time for yeah analytics. yeah yeah, so I, if, if it's OK with everyone, uh, I, I, I could continue. But if you need a break, then let's break. Um, it's almost 4 p.m. here in Finland, so I think we could continue. Yeah, OK, yeah. so I'll go back to my presentation again. Let's see, where is that? Uh, I. There is the power. So did I? Is the ah? Uh, it's not uh, there, and I, I needed to restart it. Uh, is it the ah? Uh, mm. I'm trying to shut there. So let me know when you can see. OK, yes, you can. Uh, so uh, Snowman Analytics. Uh, so I, I think I first should mention that there is a, a, a Snowman International has done a presentation about Snowman Analytics, and it's available on YouTube, and it's available on, on uh, <clears throat> On the Snowman International homepage, somewhere or the their web pages. Uh, so I, I, there is a presentation uh, about how you could use Snowman with with analytics. Uh, but but so I I will provide and like try to provide some additional 
uh, thoughts about that. Because that that's a very good presentation, and there's a tool which you could try out to generate uh, a data set which you could run analytics on, and, and so on. So it's 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 a quite nifty uh, presentation, and and there are tools that, which are used which you could try yourself. So it's it's a, quite fun. I I think. The, there was a, a paper published uh, in July this year, which I think is the strongest argument for SNOMED ever. Uh, it it was factors associated with COVID-19 related death use in open safely. It was a British study, was published in Nature, and they used SNOMED extensively to uh, get health data from uh, directly from, in this case, primary care systems. So this allowed them to use seven, uh, 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 a cohort of 17 million patients, which is like, I, I don't think it's it's been done before uh, on this detail level. And, and uh, what's even more fascinating is that it's according to uh, the principal investigator Ben Goldacre, which is going to give a presentation at the SNOMED Expo keynote. Uh, it's it took five weeks from uh, idea to uh, a manuscript to submitting a manuscript. So I I think it it this does not convince people that uh, that that SNOMED has real tangible benefits, then I don't know what. Uh, it's, it's using SNOMED CT to select, to capture data, but data in, in the health, the primary care systems is coded in, in different terminologies and, and many of them are still using, particularly for, for uh, data from, from um, Previous years, it's using read codes instead of SNOMED codes. Uh, so, so, so SNOMED has been used for defining the, uh, the the data items, but then it's mapped to uh, a number of different code systems, which are used together with SNOMED in the in the EHR systems. Uh, and the the interesting thing is that. It's it's this is not the only thing. So if you know about Odyssey, the Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics Initiative, this was published in recently in in Lancet Rheumatology. Uh, it's a hydroxychloroquine study, uh, and again, if it it it's actually if you go to the paper. It's they don't mention SNOMED CT, but the the Odyssey studies they all publish their study protocols on on GitHub, so you could go and check their protocols, and they define their cohorts by SNOMED codes, and uh, then you can can if your EHR system supports SNOMED, you could like use the SNOMED codes in your EHR after like all the the identification and and permission needed uh if you using something else there you have to map so they're actually doing mapping from icd10 to snowmed the odyssey has developed the icd10 to snowmed map uh so this is another example of how snowmed cd is used in analytics not just as an idea, but actually published papers. Uh, so, and I, this this has probably happened before, but with these examples, it's it's on a on a new scale, and and it's uh, it's it's I, I think it's it's really really interesting to see this happening. Uh, so this is not not a, a informatics people's wet dream. It's it's 
used in, in for real research purposes. So what, what, what SNOMED CT adds to analytics is that it's using the knowledge encoded in SNOMED CT and in the SNOMED CT hierarchies, it allows aggregation of patient data. So uh, this means that it's it's uh, it it can do aggregation of data on the fly rather than at coding time, as happens with uh, with the traditional means of of coding in healthcare. Uh, so you could change your since your if you're given that you're recorded recording your data at the most detail level that is possible at the time of recording you could aggregate or you could drill down after uh, the fact after you collected the data which is a huge difference compared to traditional uh, uh, traditional uh, means of, of doing analytics with with the traditional coding systems so I, here I put the link to the uh, the demonstration that that Snowmed is having. So that that is worthwhile to. There's a video, so <laughs> you could watch watch it tonight with the with the kids and get them interested. I will uh, show a, a practical example of this as well. I'm checking the time, and we're fine. Uh, so this means that I will I will stop the presentation and I will share an other window. Uh, let's see there. Let me know when you see my screen. We can see it now. Yeah. So what I have here is R Studio, and R is a statistics package, statistics software with a, a lot of packages which are used for uh, statistical analysis of, of all kinds of, of uh, materials. I don't know if we have any statisticians in the room, but if if there are, it, it's likely that you have used R, and if not, then maybe you should give it a try. Uh, there are alternatives like uh, um, SPSS and uh, and so on. So there are other ones, but this is this is another uh, one of those uh, free open source uh, systems that uh, that are actually used increasingly. Uh, um today i see that uh Mikko posted a link to the snowman city for data analysts course uh which is also a great a great resource so uh here i have actually the same data set uh i had before uh, it's the the data set from University of Nebraska Medical Center. It's it's uh, the same three million rows uh, that I have loaded into R here. I will I prepared a um, hopefully I have yeah so I prepared a. a, a uh, a, a query which which takes uh, an ECL query. There is an ECL library for R, which is actually uh, well, it was developed by a student of mine when I was at, at university. He did his thesis, uh, his bachelor thesis on this, and and developed this software. And Unfortunately, I think it's it's not currently maintained. So there is a new version of ECL which is still not supported, but it, it still does a lot of uh, of of good things. So what it it says that it takes uh, 
the data data that's a variable for the data set of the three million rows and it says uh, SNOMED CD in the SNOMED CD should be in and this is a result of running the ECL query and then there is some I need to get the year out of the store time because I want to get the histogram uh, based on year uh, uh, do aggregation per year this is of course asthma I, I could add this uh, I, I use the same example and uh, it filters uh, so year should be larger than 2002 because there's was a, a lot of noise uh, in very few cases before 2002. Uh, it groups by year and then creates a plot. Uh, it, it does a histogram based on patient ID and then, and then a plot. So let's keep our fingers crossed and uh, yeah, so this is this is what we get. This is the number of cases of asthma <laughs> over the years in in uh, in this material, and I think it stops. I don't know which the latest date is, but it's it's not uh, uh, it's it's a, from a few years ago. Uh, but this is. Um, I I will try an other uh, if I want to. Let's see. I I this is. I'm replacing this with an other. Uh, there I of course I need to. Uh, if I do. Like I want to drill down, so now I see asthma. I'm taking allergic asthma instead, uh, and see what I get, and and then I get another uh, plot based on allergic asthma. And you see the time it takes to execute these queries on my, and this is uh, R running inside a virtual machine on a on a laptop, not not the fancy machine in any way uh, so and, and of course you could use um, uh, uh, ECL uh, queries with filtering by attributes and so on and and this uh, the the software here is uh you it's is also available uh it's called snow lies it's also open source it's um uh sander loveman was a student and this describes how to install and use uh the, the software and then you use it just like uh, whatever however you would use uh, use R for your analysis. So this doing grouping by year and plotting that was just one way of of uh, uh, of doing analysis, and there are much more sophisticated things that can be done. So any any questions? about this particular part of the presentation if uh, not i could open up for any other question about anything else uh, Maybe um, one question from you. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, about the last part on the analytics and uh, yeah. 
And yeah, yeah, that was pretty um, powerful example of a uh, search and uh, query things. Then, are you aware of um, how these uh, these aspects have been used together with uh, traditional, you know, data warehousing and uh, approaches and uh, um, and uh, platforms on large scale? Yes, I. So what you can do is if you go to the so the the first paper i was showing uh uh open safely i need to spell correctly dot org i think that's the name yeah this is the uh, uh this is the the like data lab where this was uh they they did this study uh, and it's uh, let's see it's o data lab at Oxford EHR group at London School of Hygiene tropical medicine and uh, some health record software companies working on behalf of NHS England so this is uh, they they created a platform for being able to uh, run these types of queries on on a large scale uh, so this would be one uh, uh, one example and I think also Odyssey is another uh, uh, let's see how to uh, there is the this is the COVID-19 update page but they um they they have like a platform for running studies based on the software tools and standards so you could uh so this would be uh two examples at least of of uh quite large scale uh platforms i uh if how the uh, like Data warehouse. Um, uh, there are th this business intelligence business is uh, uh, has been uh, uh, there's there's been a business around uh, uh, that area for quite some time now. I don't know to which extent they have worked in this area of terminologies uh, so things like click view and uh, what what I, I, uh, other large-scale uh, data analytics systems that are not large-scale but largely uh, huge used in 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 uh, in many cases or i i i don't know uh about how they if they have developed something similar and like if if someone done something for spss or or other i don't know and and um uh, i'm i'm not sure but even so like systems like R are used in in like uh, if you go again go into the uh, to the study protocols uh, that Odyssey publishes uh, they are quite detailed and they contain they are using R because they have R R scripts to do their analysis and you could you could look into those so um, I'm so this is not my domain of expertise, but if I would like uh, guess or or uh, like a reasonably uh, educated guess, uh, I, I would maybe the data warehouse is less relevant today than it was uh, like when when you could take a million you could you could run analysis of millions of patients on your laptop you don't need using free software you maybe don't you don't need the 
those kind of data warehouses anymore. That that was speculative. I, it, yeah, thank you, Daniel. Yeah. There's one one question in chat from uh, Kari Heinonen. Yeah. About uh, access rights features. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does SumCity have any access right, for example, in a way of limiting what concept of single attributes that any given user is allowed to see? Take, so, uh, yeah, uh, so what, 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 so, uh, I'm, I'm, so you, what, what you would do in, in, uh, if there is a user interface or something, you would create the, uh, a subset of SNOMED in, in some way. And you could do that by creating a SNOMED ref set, a simple ref set, and pick the code. So you could have an ECL query, which limits the codes which a user can select from. Uh, you, could, uh, uh, you could do things like that. Uh, and that and, and you could use that either in a number of ways, like manually enumerating the concepts. You could uh, uh, use an ECL expression, or you could uh, uh, use the Snowbed API or the Fire API. So there, there, there are uh, a few opportunities there, but it, it generally there, there is there are different ways of limiting uh concepts based on attributes or so using expression constraint language okay thank you daniel um yep. are there any more questions or comments about snomad ct implementations just one more yeah yep. go ahead yeah um uh, I think the, this question relates to the analytic uh, approaches, and and uh, of course, when when we do have the source data that already has the SNOMED CC terminology, it's quite easy to uh, to use and and uh, process. And uh, but uh, another option, of course, is to use non uh, SNOMED CT. Uh, encoded source data and as part of the process try to identify uh, linkages to SNOMED city terms. So uh, have you seen both uh, happening uh, in, uh, I'm not sure about the own ODC or, or the examples you showed, Yeah, but you probably so, mentioned a little bit about the, the differences in, in the source data there. So. Yeah. So yeah, so th there are examples. I, I guess both, uh, both uh, Open Safely and the, the COVID nineteen paper I described first and Odyssey do this kind of mapping, because like not not everyone is using SNOMED yet, uh, and and probably never will there be an agreement on a single terminology, global terminology. Uh, uh so uh that 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 will be managed through mapping and and that's uh i think we've seen examples in in both these so for example odyssey maps icd10 to snowmed before doing the analysis and in the the open safely they did the mapping to the uh uh read codes for example So likely before we reach terminology in Nirvana, we will have to do a lot of mapping. And a final question or comment from Kari in chat about subsets and. Uh, uh, yeah, so subsets or such that would depend. So uh, the. So. Uh, mm, SNOMED is not inherently linked to to users. That that would be something you would have to build. Uh, like I, I see, maybe you is already answering this, but uh, so this is not built into the to this system. So that would be something that you would have to add 
when you do your your terminology integration or your so i i would imagine that it would be not linked to database user id but maybe if you're doing a data entry form in an ehr system and you're supposed to pick uh something from a list that list would be uh would be linked to the to that form and users of that form would be constrained uh because you you would in order to create those constraints you would need to know something about the context where it is used and likely at least for the data entry use case that would be through forms or what, what like templates or whatever you would call them in your EHR system. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. So I will share my screen now. Oh. Here. So thank you, Daniel, for your presentations. Yeah. Uh, next week, we have SNOMED Expo on Thursday and Friday. So everyone can join and you you had a, a in a, more info in you know chat box. Um, I will continue in Finnish if it's such okay for you, Daniel. <laughs> okay, kiitos. Eli tosiaan uh, kiitoksia kaikille osallistujille tämän päivän seminaariin. Saatte palautteita varten tämmöisen sähköpostilinkin, pyydämme teiltä palautetta tästä seminaarista. Ja tosiaan seuraava osa seminaarista jatkuu sitten 20. päivä lokakuuta patologian löydösluokituksesta ja sitten 23.10. aamupäivällä terveysongelmat ja kontaktien syyt. Ja tosiaan täältä tapahtumakalenterin kautta ää, Pääsette sitten rekisteröitymään tai ilmoittautumaan mukaan näille kolmannelle ja neljälle osalle. Ilmoittautuminen päättyy kaksi päivää ennen tuota varsinaista seminaaripäivää. Kiitos kaikille. Tak för alla. Hyvää viikonloppua. Have a nice weekend. Kiitos. Bye bye. Kiitos. Bye. bye.